the United States popularized the concept of the melting pot, blending different cultural backgrounds in the new world. The promise of religious freedom and the American dream gave people hope that a new and better life was possible. Still, the absence of a state-mandated religion did not result in the absence of a favored religion, as pretty much all minority groups can attest. But while Christian Protestants asserted their dominance on the culture, their efforts to wipe out other beliefs and practices, some older and some newly emerging, proved unsuccessful. The result is a highly syncretic society, bordering mass schizophrenia, which it seems to be exporting to an increasingly connected world. However, upon a full review of human history, it's really not that out of place. Syncretism is defined as the amalgamation or attempted amalgamation of different religions, cultures, or schools of thought. The religious definition is, for example, mixing belief in the one true God with belief in false gods, just like the people of Israel in the Book of Judges. A Christian viewpoint on the prosperity gospel reads, Another example of syncretism is the insidious fusion of Christianity with the culture of success. Satan has effectively used the success syndrome to undermine Christians in our country. Why not leave Satan out of it and blame the person is a question that could be asked. In the case of the oppressed, syncretism is the secret practice of traditional religions and rituals while outwardly pretending to practice the religion of the oppressors, usually resulting over time in a blending. Syncretism happens because trade between cultures has always existed, and the reality is they traded ideas as well. Various conquests and the creation of massive empires also mixed cultures. The most common example is the Hellenistic period, which followed Alexander the Great in the 4th century BCE and continued into the Roman Empire. The concept of heroes, prophets, or a messiah coming to save the world flowed from folklore to Zoroastrianism to Judaism into Christianity and Islam in a seemingly endless procession into the present day. Eastern religions are highly syncretic among themselves and worldwide. Karma, reincarnation, yin and yang are all well known regardless of religious background. Winter solstice and Saturnalia became Christmas. Symbols of life like evergreen trees and eggs became Christmas trees and Easter eggs. Krampus looks a lot like Satan who looks a lot like Baphomet. Today, some African Americans, likely raised Christian, are rediscovering their traditional roots in hoodoo, a return to animism and shamanism. They may even point to the Bible as evidence such as Exodus 28, 17 through 21, which describes arranging magic stones. There are plenty more examples in the Bible, and this type of thinking is definitely not isolated to hoodoo. There are many similar movements, such as Druidism and Wiccan and other beliefs long considered pagan, but now usually referred to as New Age. They are updated to fit modern society and often viewed in direct opposition to Christianity. And of course, there's the shockingly popular and resilient return of Flat Earthers. This movement is in direct opposition to modern science and an attempt to reaffirm theism. Rather than a rejection of Christianity, they borrow from it, as well as the rich history of the world as they descend into what seems to be, again, borderline schizophrenia. There's an obsession with astrology, phonology, and numerology. Believers spend long hours connecting various dots from history while ignoring that the positions of the stars have changed, calendars have changed, languages naturally and unavoidingly borrow from each other and change, and math is math. Gravity may keep our feet solidly on the ground, but the mind can think whatever it wants. Biologos is a group that, in their own words, embrace the historical Christian faith, upholding the authority and inspiration of the Bible. However, they reject a global flood and that modern animals, including humans, are descendants from the passengers of Noah's Ark. They support what they call recognizing God as creator of all life over billions of years. They explain on the same page 
that God is the divine author of scripture, but also that the humans who wrote scripture thought the sky was blue because it is an ocean of water, which is where rain comes from, and that they were speaking figuratively about an historical event. Basically saying the literal word of God is a fictional exaggeration written by ignorant humans because Jesus. Answers in Genesis start with the Bible and try to make modern science fit their beliefs. Among their many claims is that Denisovans are actually Homo sapiens and descendants of Noah's grandson Gomer. They also claim that evolution tells us to euthanize our grandmothers, so we should be thankful for God's law. The U.S. Constitution is expressly secular, and by extension, the U.S. government should be also. However, Politics and religion are notoriously syncretic. The number of open atheist presidential candidates from 2000 to 2016, Republican and Democrat, is zero. The number of Republican candidates who emphatically endorse evolution is one, John Huntsman. In 2008 and 2012, three Republican candidates rejected evolution and all but Huntsman were open to teaching some form of creationism. In 2016, Four candidates rejected evolution, including Ben Carson, who has said this theory that Darwin came up with was something that was encouraged by the adversary, so Satan. Modern syncretism, whether blending mainstream culture or a kind of postmodernism, has at least one commonality in that they are all certainly syncretic with capitalism. It has become increasingly important for all of us to take an honest inventory of our beliefs and consider where they came from and why we call them our own. It's no longer sufficient for us to leave the hard work to the experts. Each of us must take it upon ourselves to act as liberators from our mind-forged manacles. Way to go.